two rounds and two new winners in the women's series. The youngsters have grown up and brought their A-game to the beach. Liz Plumers could only watch and applaud as Jordan Mercer celebrated in grand style. Mercer dominated the Eliminator format to post her first ever Nutrigrain Series win. And in the men's, eight-time series winner Shannon Eckstein proved once again that he is unstoppable and the man to beat. Matt Bevilacqua threw everything at him. Look where Matty Bevilacqua is, right on his heels. As did Ali Day. Ali Day fought all the way through. But Eckstein's flawless racing secured his position at the top of the overall standings. He's just phenomenal, the greatest of all time. It's catch me if you can. And the chasers are all lining up for round three of the Nutrigrain Iron Man and Iron Woman series. When I go, I'm going to go hard. I like to win in everything I do. I have to beat on top of that podium. We'll see how that pans out at the end. Bring it on. I'm pumped. Newcastle is the capital of the renowned Hunter region, famous for the many vineyards that dot the entire landscape. Only a two-hour drive north of Sydney, this port city winds its way around scenic coastline and spectacular beaches. The city is a unique blend of industry, sophistication and laid-back surf culture. Hello, I'm Sam Squires and welcome to the Nutrigrain Iron Man and Iron Woman series, one of the toughest and most testing ocean sports in the world. We're here for round three at the beautiful Newcastle Beach and I'm joined now by Iron Man royalty, my co-host and two greats of the sport, Trevor Hendy, Reese Drury. Welcome, boys. Let's start with the big news that's come out this morning. Liz Plumis, the defending champion, forced to pull out. Trevor, this is devastating news for her. This is absolutely devastating. Uh, Liz, this is what she does. This is her dream to be the Iron Woman, to win the series again. She's got a grade one to two calf tear, mm. which is a really hard one to get over. Absolutely incredible lady now sitting on the sidelines watching everybody else. It's going to be hard for her. And Reese, we talked to Liz about retiring after this series. Do you think now she'll push back those plans? Yeah, look, it's hard to say. Liz would have a lot of things going through ahead at the moment. But the main thing she'd be thinking about is just trying to get that calf healed and better and hopefully racing in, in the last round down at North Cronulla. So big decisions. We'll just have to wait and see. And Trevor, how common is an injury like this for iron men and iron women? Well, it's not really, Sam. It's not a, an injury we see a lot of. Uh, we don't have a lot of that impact running. But they do call it the old person's injury. So I don't <laughs> want to throw that on top of Liz. But it's one of those ones that the uh, elasticity in the muscle starts to tighten up a little bit and you get these funny little tweaks and twinges and stuff like that. But she'll come back for she just needs to slow down that little bit, I reckon. Well, let's talk about the new generation of Iron Women that we saw in round two. Jordan Mercer, she was just dominant, wasn't she, Reese? Yeah, she was amazing. And it was just great for Jordan to see her finally get a victory. You know, she's been pushing and being very close the last few years. But for her to finally get that victory, it's a massive step. And the emotion that went with it was just awesome to watch. So a, a great day for Jordan Mercer. And it'll be interesting to see how she goes in round three. Let's take a look at the standings as we head into round three. And there's the girl we've just been talking about, Jordan Mercer, in first place. Liz Plumers in second place. Heartbreaking news, she won't be able to compete. She'll have to fall down the list quite a bit today. If you look at Courtney Hancock over the page, she's in seventh place. Disappointing position for her. And right down the list, you can see Rebecca Creedy, the big story. She was second overall in the series last year, now in 15th place. She's the veteran of the Nutrigrain series. Expect her to come back here at Newcastle Beach today. Well, we managed to catch up with some of the athletes, including Jordan Mercer, to see how they're feeling ahead of round three. All right, Jordy, round three, leading the series. You excited? I am. I mean, what, I couldn't be in a better position right now. Newcastle is just looking amazing, perfect conditions, so I'm really happy. Now, Liz Plumers is out, unfortunately. Has that changed anything for you? Well, only the fact that I'm, I'm pretty devastated, you know. I really would love to be here with Liz today and have the opportunity to race her, and unfortunately that's just not going to happen. So I think if we can take anything from, from what's happened, it's to appreciate having a fit and healthy body and I'm certainly going to get out there today and, and make the most of feeling great and being in fine form. Now Liz Plumers is out with an injury. Has that changed anything for you? Um, not really. It's a bit of a shame. Um, 
I really feel for her. She would love to be here racing and it's so tough that she's had to pull out because of injury and um, it's always great to race against the best. So I'm um, wishing her a speedy recovery, but it won't change anything. All the other girls are so good. Liz is the dominant one at the moment, but um, everyone else is going so well. So we'll just have to go just as hard. Now what's the game plan for round three? I don't really have one. I think I'm pretty nervous. So I'm just trying to like flush that out, get my foot on the line. And then when that gun goes, try focus on what I need to focus. Let's talk about the men's race now. And who else can we talk about but Shannon Exxon, dominant in rounds one and rounds two, and was incredible in the sprint format last week, Reese. Yeah, absolutely, Sam. He just blew the field away. It was amazing to watch from the beach, and he never ceases to amaze me. And Trevor, he certainly will have a target on his back. Uh, who can topple him looking at these conditions today? Well, I still love watching him race. It's amazing. He's basically schooling everybody else. But one thing about Shannon, he's, uh, he does all the little things right. So the guys just have to pick up on those little things. People like Kendrick Louie absolutely could come back and have a great race. Ali Day and Matt Bevelacqua weren't that far behind until they made those little mistakes. Well, you talk about Kendrick Louie. Disappointing results for him last week, uh, as well as Matt Poole. What's happening there? Will we see him come back? Yeah, look, I spoke to Kendrick last night out at dinner and, and he's pretty determined. He went away from Coolum and he worked on his weaknesses. He, he said he had to work on his running, so he's done that. He'll be back. Pooley, I don't know. He's, he's saying that injury's not affecting him, but I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how he goes. Let's take a look at the standings as we head into round three here at Newcastle Beach. And at the top is Shannon Eckstein and Matt Bevelacqua and Alistair Day. That's been the podium for the first two rounds. Will that change here at Newcastle? Further down, Kane Eckstein and Kendrick Louie expect big things from both of those guys today. And then across the page, Wes Berg, Matt Poole. It's so strange seeing names like that so far down the standings. Well, we caught up with some of the boys earlier today to see how they're feeling ahead of the race and how they plan to catch that one man, Shannon Eckstein. Well, round three, Newcastle Beach. Shannon Eckstein, the king, is out in front. What's the tactics for today? Oh, try to hang on to him as long as you can, mate. Uh, you know, he's on fire at the moment and he's going to be really tough to beat today. Um, you know, it's hot out there. It's pretty flat like Coolum was as well, mate. So, it, um, yeah, you just want to be consistent, I guess, mate. Do the little things right, do the simple things right and um, just worry about yourself and... I guess just control what you can control, mate, and, and that's what it's all about today, I think. Yeah, all right, Shannon Eckstein, he's the king. How are you going to beat him, Maxi? Mate, I don't, I don't know that I necessarily can beat him. I think if I can get a, a, a big handy wave from out the back and maybe sprint him up the beach or something, but um, he seems to have it, you know, unlocked at the moment. He's pretty awesome. Mate, that target's on your back again. What's the tactics for today? Yeah, I've had a good round one and two, but, um, you know, it's a clean slate for round three. You can't rely on, you know, what, you, what you've done in the past. So um, I think this format's new to us. Uh, it worked well. I went off second to Cuffy in the first round. So um, you just got to be up in the first two races and then put yourself in contention and feel good in the last one. Well, all the action from the women's race is about to get underway. But first, let's take a look at the woman who's leading the standings. And is that Mercer name a blessing or a burden? I was proud of myself last season. I had some great races, I, I made some mistakes and I certainly learnt some lessons. Here's Jordan Mercer trailing behind Liz Plumas and Jordan Mercer will be very, very pleased. That definitely fired me up and, and motivated me to shift my focus to 2015-16. I think this is my sixth year so no excuses, I'm out there bubble blowing, arm throwing and yeah, I, I really want to have some great swims this season. Magic. I can't tell you how much pressure has come with having Darren as my dad and Dean as my uncle. Who better could I ask to have in my corner? My dad's my coach, my hero, my mentor, my best friend, my enemy. I am so proud that Darren Merce is my father. I'm ready to take a victory and there's no better year to do it than now. I know what I have to do and I'm fired up and, and I want it bad enough. The girls that are out there and the ones that I have to race and the ones that I have to beat if I want to be on top of that podium, if I did make it, I would have beaten the best of the best. There isn't anybody missing, it, it's, it's on.
Welcome back to Newcastle Beach. This is round three of the Nutrigrain Iron Men and Iron Women series. The women's race is about to get underway. The girls are warming up as we speak. Let's take a look at the conditions they'll be facing here in Newcastle. And it is a sunny 28 degrees. Very warm out here on the beach. The water temperature isn't though. Chilly 17 degrees. Much colder than those Queensland girls have been competing in. The swell is half a metre. Winds coming in from the nor'east about 8 to 10 knots. Well, it's time now to hand over to your commentators for the race, Tim Gilbert, Trevor Hendy and Kurt Hansen. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Yeah, certainly nice and sharp 17. Not quite that cold where Jordan Mercer's from or where Courtney trains. But uh, Newcastle looking pretty as a pitcher today as the girls get ready. Yeah, Tim, great to be here. Round number three, getting ready to start the triple sprint pursuit format. Three races in total today. Those first two races, all about accruing as many points as possible. You're going to have to finish as high up in the placings, and it comes down to that final handicap there to see where we'll start off, much like round one, Trev. Yeah, and what a drama round one was, you know, standing under the start line there with a bit of a lead and everyone wondering, could they hold on? Yeah, here's the start list. No, Liz Plumers, of course, injured. Rebecca Creedy, Harriet Brown, Courtney Hancock, Jordan Mercer. What a series she's having. Christy, Kirsty Higginson, rather, also having a brilliant series, as is Georgia Miller. And uh, Lizzie Wellborn, of course, there, just a teenager. Crystal Smith at the other end of the spectrum and Eliza Smith. Yeah, huge news really breaking. Liz Plumers uh, tearing a calf muscle uh, a little earlier this week in training. So the defending champion not here and uh, it's really going to well, savage her uh, overall ambitions to try and win this series. Of course, the current Triple Crown champion as well, uh, winning the Coolangatta Gold and the, the national title, two-time national champion, uh, Trev. So, uh, yeah, big news here, isn't it? It's really going to open the door for some of these youngsters to, to step up and, and fill that void. That door is wide open like it hasn't been before. And we went past Courtney Hancock before and Jordan Mercer on the line. Can they do it today? We have a look at the course. It is short course. This is the distance that the World Championship has run over. So they do it a lot. It's swim 350 metres out, roughly about four minutes or so. Board 550, once again about four metres four minutes and we're at another four minute leg ski to round it off and they've got to get that placing to uh, get a good start in the third race. Yeah, so here we are ready to go. The chess on water. The girls away and racing this first leg swim board ski the order for this uh, opening race and just uh, critical for these girls to just set the tone, set the standard early on here and uh, try and take the pressure off and uh, Trev, uh, plenty of chances now for someone to step up in the absence of Liz Plumas. Yeah, we're talking a lot today about opening the door. The door's wide open. If you look at the centre of the screen there, it's almost on the right of the pack. That's Brody Moyer that's jumped into that gap. Three or four years ago, she was the one dominating this sport. She did so well for a 12-month period. So it's like the waves in the ocean. The girls, they come up and they go down, they come up and they go down. But right now, Brody Moyer will be one that will be looking to jump through that open door. And those drone shots are absolutely beautiful. The reason why I say chess on water, because it's all full of tactics, isn't it? These first two races, so that you are cherry ripe in that third race, not to be too far back, because it's all handicapped. Yeah, I think there's two trains of thought here. Uh, the first one, if you know, uh, especially a rookie in the series, you've got nothing to lose, I think you really need to bust out a big effort in the first and second race. And if you're suffering for a bit of energy in that last one, at least you're going to be up there to wash ride. And then you go the flip side of that, you've got the more experienced competitors that will try to go to the front here and uh, try and set a standard and then ease off and save themselves for that third and final race. Well, let's break that race that you're talking about, that result that we're looking for. Let's break it down into the legs. Each leg is so important. Each leg you can break it down into the start, the middle, the turns, the finish, all that sort of stuff. So the real important thing is to have that overall objective of where you want to get. But for the guys and the girls in Iron, Iron Woman, Iron Man racing, it's all about being in the moment and dealing with what you're dealing with in the moment. Yeah, well, being in the moment, Georgia Miller in the moment right now, rookie in the series uh, this year for the first time. And uh, she kind of takes that... Uh, I guess the, the new modern route to, into the into the Nutrigrain series where you, you start off as a pool swimmer and we've seen a couple of athletes go through that way and then she uh, she comes out becoming an Ironwoman and, and doing a great job. Yeah, Rebecca Creedy so good at that last season, wasn't she? All right, let's get down to the beach and see Sam. Well, I'm here with race director Zane Holmes. And Zane, tell me about the conditions today. How extra gruelling does that make it? Look, it, it does. Flat conditions make it tough. You know, you don't have that opportunity for a rest on a wave. Uh, so it just makes it that extra, you know, extra percentage harder. So, you know, these guys are going to have to be 
have done all the work and uh, be extremely fit. You've competed here so many times. Any tips? Does it have any nuances that we should know about this beach? Look, Newcastle's a great beach. I love racing here. Um, we usually get waves, but we've been unlucky today. Um, look, there's you know there's reef either end, rocks either end. That's pretty much the main thing that the athletes need to be aware of. All right, thanks. Thank you. Beautiful part of the world, Newcastle, the Steel City, and we have the Iron Man and Iron Women series. Thanks to Newt Gray. Hey, what about Courtney Hancock turning it on, coming back? So, talking about two of the best swimmers in the business and flat conditions today here, Trevor, and uh, Hancock and Miller straight to the front. Oh, and look at that wonderful technique. It's when you get that flat conditions, it's all about your travel through the water, your streamlining, not so much about the skill side of it, which these girls do have as well. But we'll just see there, that's Georgia Miller running up. And how impressive has she been this year already? We're just coming onto the halfway point of the series. And I'm so impressed by this young lady. Had a lot of promise for a lot of time, but she's starting to fill it. Are some of these young athletes, as we see them burst up the beach for the first time, are they too young to be scared? Are they too young to be intimidated? Well, you start off with that brash thing, you know. You're actually going, right, I can do this, and no one's going to stop me. But there is a certain period where you start to get a bit tense. You get a bit closer to the lead, and all of a sudden, the expectation I'm going to do better next time, sometimes, strangles you and pulls you back down to the ground. Yeah, some good swimmers here. Obviously, Harriet Brown's great. Brody Moyer, an outstanding opening swim leg. That's probably her weakest leg. Maddie Dunn as well. Eliza Smith's a great swimmer. Ella Brown in there as well. So uh, currently these conditions, this first race, obviously swim first and these flat conditions uh, favouring the girls that love to do the work in the chlorine in those early mornings and uh, already setting the tone here. Uh, Georgia Miller and uh, you know what what a rise. Uh, you know the uh, the athlete of the carnival, female athlete of the carnival with the Australian titles uh, last year as we're on board here with Geordie Mercer of course winner of round two. And uh, what a story Mercer's been uh, this summer. Her sixth year in the series, she had to race 31 uh, series races and she got her first ever race victory in round two with race number 32. So persistent stuff. Oh, she's full of confidence. This is Wide World of Sports. We'll have more after this. Great to have your company, Nines Wide World of Sports, round three of the Nutrigrain Iron Women Series, and uh, it's a interesting one. We're going to end up with a handicap race after these first two races here in the women's. Yeah, well, the girls setting the tone early on here. Georgia Miller and Courtney Hancock, they've come here today on a mission, and they want to bust out this first race, and they're going about it the right way. Miller off first, Hancock right on her tail. Looks like Maddie Dunn, Trevor, big board leg by her in third. Oh, fantastic. We've seen Maddie win a couple of series races. Look at the chase pack back there on the third wave. They're all closing up. It's getting really important now. This is the second of the three legs. Geordie Mercer, head down chasing the runs. The three legs of this race. But let's not forget, we've talked about it a couple of times, the points they get in here add to the points they get in round two, and you get a ranking into round three. And each place you are up the ranking gives you a two-second head start. So these girls are now racing for a head start in the final. What a jump from Lizzie Wellborn there, 15th up to fourth. Another good mover, of course, uh, Jordan Mercer didn't have a great swim, 13 up to 9 at the moment. So there you see Jordan. Yeah, Lizzie Wellborn, what can you say? The under-17 Australian board champion. She almost won the uh, open board title as well, finishing run-up to Liz Plumas uh, at Kira last year. So a phenomenal paddler she is. And these rookies continue to turn it on here. And Georgia Miller, it's just been such a such a pleasure to watch her come through. She was a freshwater nipper and uh, great to see her grow up through the ranks there and obviously made the move from Manly and then from Manly to Newport in the last couple of years under her head coach, Trent Herring, and just gone from strength to strength. As we see the girls stretching right out there, that is Georgia Miller up the front of the pack. And you can really see the technique for someone who's come through pool swimming. You'd have to be a kayak paddler or a ski paddler to notice the differences between her and a solid, solid ski paddler like Kirsty Higginson. But she's, her technique is getting very sound. It's very strong. She's got great rotation. We're seeing the nose of her ski really cutting through the water. There's a lot of power in Georgia Miller and certainly a lot of fitness. So, Kurt, break this down for us. How do these first two races work towards that handicapping? Well, it's all about getting your ranking as high as possible, Tim. And here you, you win this first race, you get maximum points, maximum ranking. And we add those uh, two races together, race one and race two. And whoever has uh, the best ranking there can go off the go off the starter's gun and then next best, two seconds behind, next best, two seconds behind. And Trevor, as we saw in round one, you don't want to be outside that top ten because then you start giving these leader girls 20-second start, and that's just too much in these conditions. 
Oh, and as we see Ella Brown come through there next to Brody Moyer, looking back through the field, Geordie Mercer there as well. These are some of the girls you would expect to do really well. Kirsty Higgison, our round one winner. So right now they're quite a few places back from the front. That could convert into a, a 10, 12, 14, 16 or 18 second deficit in the final round. So you don't want to be back here right now, particularly not in the third leg of this race. Yeah, if, if there was surf on, then it's a different story. Then we start to talk more tactics. But in this flat surf, uh, these girls, Tian Raymond, they're at the back. A lot of work to do, but she uh, yeah, looking really good at the front. Looks like is it Maddie Dunn there on a nice little runner, kind of pull up alongside Georgia Miller here, and uh, really a, a nice uh, finish off for this race. And uh, Miller, well, we're going to get a little sprint finish for maximum points. Here we go. This is what I love about it because this now all of a sudden becomes important. If she wins the sprint up the beach, she gets two seconds, basically effectively, yep. on the rest of the field or the or the second place in this race. So every place now counts. They're not floating through, waiting to save themselves for the third race. This is going to get interesting. Yeah, so Miller looks like just with a little edge here, uh, Tim. And uh, Maddie Dunn, she's a great runner as well. Look for her to fire up. And Courtney Hancock, not far off either. Yeah, she had a bit of bad luck in the first two rounds, Maddie Dunn. But here she comes. She's taken a different angle at this one to Georgia Miller. And she'll be first up onto her feet. Well and done. Uh, up she goes, Maddie Dunn. Yeah, well, did not lead for any of that race apart from the bit that counted. So Maddie Dunn, uh, such a consistent performer. And obviously off the back of a great board leg there and a great ski leg is going to come over and take maximum points. Georgia Miller couldn't have asked for much more than that. Uh, led it for most of the race. It looks like Courtney Hancock in third and Lizzie Wellborn coming up the beach here in fourth. So a good start. Now this is where we start to go. Every place counts, every race counts. And uh, Mercer trying to charge home over the top. It looks like of Carly Nervin. Yeah, here we go. There's Harriet Brown and Brody Moyer. All these points count. There's Jordan Mercer, of course, and uh, Nerthen just behind her. So, so important, this first and second race, to be in the right position for the third one. A absolutely. And we just saw Kirsty Higginson run out of the water there. Winner of round one would really see herself as a chance in the overall series. And she needs to move herself up through the field more consistently to be one of those chances. Yeah, Crystal Smith, uh, Tara Coleman, and looks like Amy Nervin in, uh, in a bit of trouble there. So we'll, uh, we'll have to check in with her and, and see what's gone wrong. All right, let's get down to Sam. Sam's on the beach. Sam? Maddie, congratulations. Great performance there. How tough was that last bit? Oh, probably the toughest thing I've ever done. <laughs> it's a bit flat out there. You've got nothing coming in. you just got to fight for every runner you see and try and get it. So it's tough out there. It's definitely tough. Not an easy day at the office, but she's done well. Maddie Dunn out there in first. Georgia Miller, Hancock, Wellborn, Brown, Moyer. And uh, how good is Lizzie? Wellborn just turned 17 years of age. Jordan Mercer is on uh, 12 after coming seventh. Carly Nerthen, Brown, Higgison, Smith, Coleman, Mackenzie, Raymond, Creedy, and down there. Liz Plume is, of course, not competing. This is the Nutrigrain Iron Women and Iron Man Series. Race one for the men coming up. Nines, why World of Sports? in round two. Uh, what do you think about the conditions and how you'll go getting here in Newcastle? Yeah, I'm feeling really good. Uh, it's, it's a great day down here and we've got a good turnout and um, everyone's pumped, ready to go. It should be good. And the next line's got a target on his back. How are you going to topple him? Yeah, I'm really keen to topple him. Those two seconds, I couldn't, couldn't stop thinking about them. So um, I've got to try and fix something and try and not make mistakes and really fix those problems. It's not easy when you've got an absolute out-and-out -out legend in front of you. Shannon Eckstein, the professor, just extraordinary. Here are some of the other guys. Kendrick Louie, of course, yet to find his full form, but so many great athletes here as we look at the start list. Ali Day, last year's winner. There is Shannon, Matt Poole, Kendrick Louie, Bergen Bevilacqua, and uh, the men's. This is race one for the men. Jack Moyes in his second season. Hayden White, of course, Jackson Maynard. Max Brooks uh, on debut. Uh, this year, and there's Ben Carberry, Max Beattie, Luke Cuff, Nathan Smith, who has been doing this for quite some time and doing it so well. What a brilliant performer he has been. Yeah, boys on the line there, yeah, one of the rookies and one of the veterans, a couple of Burley Heads boys, Ben Carberry, Wesberg, Ali Dane there as well, Kane Eckstein looking to bounce back. Uh, okay, we there, Max Beattie, Jack Moyes, big thumbs up, Dane Farrell, a great swimmer, so too, Nathan Smith, and uh, Trevor, once again, surely this first race to favour the swimmers. Dead flat conditions, it's a long swim, that same order, swim board ski. 
Yeah, so it's all about getting a great start. We know, we've talked about it. You have to get those points in early to give yourself seconds in the third race, seconds lead over other people. These guys are so competitive. As we look at the course, of course, the first leg is going to be the swim leg. They're standing on the line, adjusting the goggles out to sea, 400 metres, around four minutes worth. Not a lot of waves to deal with. They come back around, they do it again on the board, go a little bit further out. Again on the ski, further out, they come back in, they finish off. Where they finish is their points towards that third round. We are in Newcastle. It is a picture postcard perfect day. Really is beautiful. And here we go. We're off with the men. So racing now. Round number three, race number one here in that uh, triple pursuit format. And uh, much the same. Placings equal points. And you just want to get off to a good start and uh, try and get maximum points here. Those first two races add up. And then that third and final race, like round one was, it's a handicap. And uh, Trev, uh, I guess these guys would have come down to the beach this morning and, uh, well, I don't think they would have been too happy when they saw that there's not much of a bump. No, they were expecting a bump. We're actually thinking there was going to be a bump this morning. It hasn't showed up just yet. We might see a little bit more as the day goes on. But as we see them swimming out through the break there, in our last shot, we could see the high rise in the background. A few of the crew are staying up there looking down, and there it is. They've been looking down at this course. So what they look for is they look for that deeper blue water, the colour in the water. The light green colour is where it's shallower. The deeper blue colour is where it's deeper. That's where the water flows out. So even on a day like today where it's pretty flat, there is still a little bit of water running out on the left side. So if you have a look at the course there, look at the field there, on the right side as we look at it, that's the le their left side. That's where they've travelled out that little bit faster. And so there are little things and they really get highlighted on these small days. You have to find the bumps. And as we see them roar out to the first can, one bloke looking for improvement is Matt Poole. And Matt Poole's right at the front of the pack right now. I think he's actually starting to find his feet. We watch him come into the first cam here, can here. I'm sitting next to Kurt, one of our great surf races. This is where it gets really oh, fresh and fresh. Look at this. Down under. Underwater. Oh, you just oh, oh. again, double bump. So uh, this is the thing. It just sucks so much energy. And look at the gap that's opened up. The two boys in front looks like Nathan Smith and Dane Farrell. And what that means is that second pack you can see as they come into the can, they're going to clash again. So we see him come in. The hands over the top. Here he goes. Look at this. Hands pushing, shoving. It's all happening in the pack. Yeah, and one of the guys right in the middle of that, of course, is Jack Moyes. And he would have learned so much from his first season last year, Jack Moyes. I think you have to work on those weaknesses and that's why I've moved up with Darren. Darren's got so much insight to uh, making athletes better athletes, I think. Um, so we've worked really hard. We've done lots of flat water sessions on the ski to try and improve that leg. And then at Noosa Aquatic Centre with John Rogers to improve my swimming. Um, so I think one day I want to be the ultimate athlete like Shannon and be equal you know, swim, board, ski, and the running. So um, it's tricky. You've got to work on your weaknesses, yes. Um, but the board will always be my favourite. So, um, yeah. Yeah, phenomenal board paddler, Jack Moyes. Obviously started uh, his career on the Central Coast there at Terrigal and, and made the move up to the, to the sunny coast now at, at Noosa Heads, uh, Trev, and trying to work on, on, especially on that swim leg and, and that ski leg. Oh, look, I love what he just had to say. You know, wants to be, he's aiming to be the ultimate athlete like Shannon, where there is no weakness. It's really about identifying it. I think there's quite a few people in the field that may be thinking the same thing. So the real challenge is he's got the right idea and the right mindset. It's the willingness to follow that through when it gets really hard. Often a leg is your weakness because you don't like it that much because you find it uncomfortable. It's not natural to you. They're the hard ones. So as we see him come back into the field here. Oh, they're doing it tough, doing aren't Doing a they? great job. Yeah, not a lot of surf about today. They're the handlers ready for them uh, as they make their way to the beach. Also on the beach today, of course, is Sam Squires. Sam, what are you seeing down there? Oh, and it's Nathan Smith in front and Dane Farrell as well. In third place, Matt Poole doing really well as they come around the turn for the first interchange. Yeah, big swim there, Matt Poole. Shout out next time, never too far from it. Ben Carberry, Kane Eckstein, Ali Day. Back to Kendrick Louie. And uh, last round's runner-up, Matt Bevelacker and Jack Moyes that we just saw that little feature on. So here we go now. And Dane Farrell, one of the most underrated swimmers uh, in Ironman racing. He's a phenomenal board paddler as well. What about the transition for a pool there on the blue board? Oh, and we see pool on the blue. And then on the second from the right, we see Shannon Eckstein, who covers every move that anybody ever makes. Oh, plenty more to come. This is Nine's Wide World of Sports. See you soon. Great to have your company, the Neutral Grain Ironman Series, beautiful Newcastle, and it's race one here. It's all important where you finish, 
here and in the next race to see where you're handicapped for the third one. Oh, and the showdown continues here at Newcastle. Matt Poole v Shannon Eckstein. It just picks up where it left off the last two summers, Trev. They, they just love throwing it at each other as hard as they can. As Pooley really puts the weight forward on the board, will he push over this? No, he won't, so Shannon Eckstein will join him again. And, of course, you're referring to that moment when Matt Poole came around the corner and Shannon Eckstein ended up laying in the sand. There was a bit of a shove there. And I don't think they've let it go just yet. So back at Newcastle, and here we are, deja vu. Yeah, well, that's two summers ago, and they still talk about it, and it's definitely going to go down in history as one of the great ones. But he's a bit like the Hulk, Pooley. Uh, the more you make him angry, the stronger he gets. And I think he just relishes every chance he can get a shot at a Shannon Eckstein. Great leg there by Matt Bevelak. Well, look at him flying through transition. Oh, right? he's very quick. All right, let's get down to the beach. Matt Bavalagua has powered through the sand there to take his ski for the final leg in first place. Matt Poole has a point to prove as well. And, of course, followed by the professor, Shannon Eckstein. What did we just see from Matty Bevelacqua? We see the other boys coming up through. Nathan Smith and Jack Moyes we heard from before. But Matty Bevelacqua actually ran that tr transition exactly like he spoke before. He wants to do better today. How good did he go? Ninth up to second in that transition. And uh, let's mention Luke Cuff as well because he did well. 16th up to eighth. Yeah, some good stuff for that. That was crazy transition. I don't know what... He went like a man possessed, and I think in the first race, I don't know if it's adrenaline, I don't know if it was a tactic, but certainly the pace has eased back off now. But that was some crazy stuff on board with Ali here in fifth spot. Ali looking like he's puffing a little bit there. Doesn't he look like he's working hard? But Ali will do that all day. Three times winner of the Cool and Gatta Gold. Matty Bev on the right, on the red ski there on the right is... Uh, done that amazing transition but he's starting to show that experience where he gets on the ski and then slows it back down slows the pace he really wanted to cover everybody else and make sure he was dictating the terms it was it wasn't an odd thing i've never seen a transition that quick at such an early stage of this format of a race he's still got another two races to go on top of this and it seemed like that was something serious speed well we'd have to ask him wouldn't we what exactly was going through your mind we do it a lot in training we ask for, for the athletes to actually get a change of gears you must establish the ability to change gears. He certainly did that, so he looks good. As we see them thunder out to the cans on the ski, and we're on board with Wes Berg before now. We're with Jackson Maynard, and he's in 13th right at the moment. But it, it probably is an anecdote of this format as well. You do need to get yourself positioned right in these first two races if you're going to have any chance in the third. You really do. It's all about those points right now to get that ultimate ranking. It's also about confidence. It's also about how you feel on the day. Right now, you see Ali Day sitting at the back of that pack at the front. Shannon Eckstein's taken the lead, as he does so many times. He'll get the lead on the inside, and then he'll streak away. The other guys have to start learning these things. They have to learn how to actually conserve energy, make their moves at the right time. I think we're going to see a lot of racing from Shannon this year that will be very smart racing. He's getting a little bit older. He's so, so smart about it. We've always called him the professor, but he does it better than anybody else. Yeah, Wesberg going all right. Kendrick Louis as well. And now this is where the work's really got to be done. Max Beatty in a bit of trouble there as well. They've got to do a, a bit of a job here, the Kiwi boys. Corey Taylor, look at that space. They've really got the now and next time. Uh, signature move by him. He's starting to connect these runners and making it look really, really easy. From a layperson's eyes, it's quite extraordinary, isn't it? And he just bursts out of that can and gains a few metres straight away. Yeah, Nathan Smith on a pearler as well. So some great shots here. And, and to see these boys... But, here we go. It's the uh, the orange and the lime green once again of Eckstein, who uh, everyone, he was the talk of the town, obviously won the first two rounds. He's going to take out this first race here. And he's just, he looks better than ever. And you're thinking, don't you, aren't you meant to get slower as you get older? But he just seems to be in this incredible patch of form that he just, he just looks so good. I, I want you to look out for something a little bit more. I want you to notice when Shannon leans forward. As soon as Shannon leans forward, it's like the focus comes on and he switches on. It's not an accident and it's not luck that he's on the first wave so often. He conserves his energy and he makes the move exactly when he needs to. Very, very smart. But although he keeps a, uh, a good poker face, he would have been breathing fire after last year's series and not winning it. He only knows one position and that's number one. Yeah, he's been chasing Ali Day this year, but really actually surpassing him, keeping Matty Bevelacqua and Ali Day behind him at the moment, as we see Ali running up. Yeah, points everything here. Eckstein just executed that race perfectly. And there's Bevelac with that big transition. He's still going to get second spot. Matt Poole in third, and then back Ali Day. And was that a fast-finishing Dane Farrell? He'll be happy with the top five result in this first race. Kendrick Louie up there now as well. And as we see Jack Moyes come across, we heard from him just a little while ago, and Nathan Smith 
he just waltzes across the line. Yeah, Kendrick Louis crossing now, and here we go. This is the race on. Every place counts, every race counts. They know it's seconds here. Wes Berg coming across the line. Benny Carberry, Jack Maynard. Oh, so close on the line there for those lads. Let's get to Sam. She's got the professor. Shannon Eckstein, congratulations. You've got the first win in the bag. You came into that last leg in third place, just powered home there. It's hard yards though, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, there's this second bank here at Newcastle. It's, it's sort of capping every now and again. And on the board, if you get one through it, it makes it a lot easier. You can rest your legs. But uh, Paul and I have sort of paddled through it and made that transition really, really hard. So, um, you know, it's great to get the win in the first round, but, um, you know, it's two more to go. This is the Neutral Grain Ironman Series. Shannon X time in a very familiar spot. Matty Bavalacqua, that sprint. We all will look at that going forward. And, of course, Jackson Maydard down there in 11th. Tannen Linden as we turn the page. And uh, we see some guys with a bit of work to do for race two if they're going to be in the right spot when we get to race three. Kane X time, and there is Hayden White. We saw in one of those transitions, you really put on the pace and, and really took a lot of pressure on, put a lot of pressure on Shannon. Is that the game plan? A little bit, yeah. You know, he's um, he loves this format with a bit of rest and he's all speed. You know, I see him in the pool every day, he flies. And um, hopefully I've maybe got a bit of fitness on him, being a bit younger. So, um, yeah, hopefully I can get to race three a little bit fresher than he does. Oh, he's still got the smile. The women are next, of course. There's the big battle on here in Newcastle. Who is going to win race two? And then we're on to the handicapped Neutral Grain Ironman Iron Women Series. How good is it? What a great race. Nine's Wild World of Sports. See you soon. Welcome back to Channel 9's Wide World of Sports, the Neutral Grain Series, and we've had one race for men, one race for women. Now the all-important triple sprint pursuit, race two for the women, and it's all about where you finish up. Got to come down to instinct here, Trent. Really is. This start line, there's so many little things on a small day. It's just how you get your board down, it's how you position yourself, it's getting a good skim and hop and getting away well. Yeah, good headspace as well. If you had a good race first up, you want to back it up. If you had a bad one, you want to make amends. And here they go, race number two, board swim, ski the order. Girls pick it up and uh, straight on, here they go. And it looks like uh, off to a great start, Crystal Smith flying away there. But it looks like, uh, yeah, a couple of mistakes at the back there as well. So a couple of girls not off to a good start. And don't know what's going wrong there at the back. Well, I might have to check that out. But uh, experience coming to the forefront at the moment. Crystal Smith flying there out in front. Look how far that's spread out just from that one little thing. You wouldn't think it, but that's all about that focus, that ability to really bring yourself into the moment and get the board down clean. If you don't, you're stuck in the pack with everybody else. You get all the other water and you just get projected backwards. Yeah, Harriet Brown there, plenty of uh, wash, crash and bash. That's where you want to stay out on board here, of course, the uh, the green and red of Tara Coleman. And you can see that she's desperately trying to get the wash, heading for Danielle McKenzie, looks out in front there. And on board with Jordan Mercy in 13th spot, so what's doing here? She's one of the best board paddlers in the business. It must have had some trouble at the start. Let's take a look at the replay. You see her running, she's got that inside on. Oh, she's Whoa. jumped in, rolled off the side of the board there. You can see her eyes were focused forward. We look at it, she doesn't land on her board properly. And now, the number one way to get a bad start is to be thinking in your mind, got to get a good start, got to get a good, good start. Because you're thinking about the future instead of putting your board down. It's down to the little things. You've got to put it down and land on it first. Yeah, if this was a local clubby carnival, you might be able to get away with a mistake like that. But at this level, this is the top tier of the sport. You find yourself backdoor very quickly. So Harriet Brown as well there in seventh. A bit of work to do. And there's going to be some carnage as they come up to this first can. Yeah, oh, it's all nice and congested. A dead set is a supermarket car park at Christmas time, Trent. <laughs> it is exactly that. Everybody wants the spot. They want the spot right at the front. And it's so, so important. We talked a little bit about Jordan Mercer getting a bad start. You know, for the girls, when they do have these little things... Oh, look, there's oh, the oh Miller! Oh, Miller caught again. on that can there. So there's a big pile-up. Look at this. Oh, oh it's a carnage at the can. So Crystal Smith and Danielle McKenzie, they're gone. They're through. And all of a sudden, Miller, who won the first race, has got caught up. Let's oh. check out the replay. You can see they're coming on the inside. She cuts the corner on the whiteboard. Bang. Nose goes in that little loop under the can. She's stuck there. Everybody, look at the girls pushing to try and get her around. 
The ones around the outside have done okay, but Georgia Miller stuck. It's like one of those shopping trolleys that won't go right. Have a look at this again. Look at this, Courtney oh. Hancock. Oh, cops another one. Looks like here. Oh, bang as well. So Hancock oh, <laughs> cops a foot to the head. And that's what happens here. But no worries for these two girls out in front. Crystal Smith, the veteran, the left-hand side of screen. And D-Mac, Danielle McKenzie of New Zealand on the right-hand side having a great opener. That's why we call it Iron Woman, right? Because you've got to take the knocks. You know, the, the emotional, the mental knock of not getting off the start. The knock in the face, you know, the, the swim, everything about it. You have to deal with so much in this sport. Yeah, we're going to see a desperate, desperate paddle here because there is no surf. It's nice and flat. It's hard work. Yeah, a little bit of a bump here. It looks like is it Maddie Dunn again. All smiles here. Harriet Brown and uh, Maddie Dunn alongside her trying to get this little wave now. Look at them push, 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 push. They know this is a runner. This can turn into a wave and here they come down. Brown done a great job to get down this. She's going to catch up. She's going to go past Mackenzie. And Mercer's come from the clouds, so good for her, but... Harriet Brown, the Victorian, obviously, originally from Ocean Grove and now up there on the Gold Coast for a long time at the North Cliff Club. She has come beautifully down that runner and look at the gap she's put on the field. How hard is it when it's this small to just grab that little morsel? Oh, and those little moments are so difficult to get, but they're so rewarding when you get them. So now it's the focus for the rest of the girls. Let's get on the second wave. Must get the second wave. And what have we got? Two, three, four, maybe five just on that second little lump. Yeah, Harriet Brown, outstanding finish of that board leg. We know what a phenomenal swimmer is. she is as well. And uh, out they come, the chasing pack there. Great board leg, as you'd expect. Lizzie Wellborn, Crystal Smith in there as well. Jordan Mercer, what a comeback by her after falling off the start, currently in fourth spot. Unbelievable. One thing we have seen from Jordy so far this season is incredible transitions. Look at the focus in her eyes, getting the goggles ready to go. Yeah, Danielle McKenzie in there, Maddie Dunn. Georgia Miller fought back well as well after being caught on that first can. Tara Coleman in that chase pack. Courtney Hancock with a bit of work to do. Kirsty Higgison in there. Brody Moyer as well. And now into this swim leg. These girls are going to be feeling, uh, feeling the burn most definitely. But every place counts, every race counts. And you've got to position yourself well here if you want to be uh, any chance of winning uh, in that third and final race. And we see Ella Brown was back there in 15th spot. She's one of the best board paddlers in the field. She's an incredibly strong board paddler for a young girl. We also see Brody Moyer just a couple of places in front of her. That's how good this field is now. It's the first leg, one of your strongest legs, and you can still end up 13th, 14th or 15th. This field has gone to a whole new level. Yeah, you know what I think happened with Miller getting caught on that can? That just negated it was as we see that replay here. Brown just worked it. Look at her sit up, and she just waited for it to go again and then ducked down again and just pushed it down. Momentum. So beautifully done, wasn't it? Look at those arms. She's got such long arms. One of the tallest girls in the series. How's it all going to end? Nine's Wild World of Sports. It is great to have you company on Channel 9. We have a glorious day in Newcastle and a gruelling day for the women and the men in the New Tigrayan Iron Man and Iron Women series. Yes, yeah, so spread out in this swim leg now. And second race, and for those that have just joined us, we're talking about an accumulation of points here in these first two races to see who has the best position in this third and final race coming up. Oh, and the wave's coming up here, Kurt. Look at this. Can the girls get it from the back? Oh, down it. This is Whoa. what you want. A little bit of a jag. The girls have dialed it up from behind. Heartbreak for the leaders. And who's going to emerge here? Not only have you just overtaken plenty of competitors, but you've got a little bit of rest too. So up they come. Right up there, Courtney Hancock. Front and centre, Harriet Brown hangs in there. Rebecca Creedy, Kirsty Higgison, Jordan Mercer, Ella Brown got that wave as well. So just what the doctor ordered for those girls mid-pack. And Georgia Miller in there as well. This is incredible. What a recovery from Courtney Hancock. She turned that all around in that swim leg. Oh, it's so cruel sometimes. Harriet Brown had done all the work in front. But uh, that little wave, especially on a flat day, makes even a bigger difference. Yeah, well done, Ella Brown. Ella Brown's gone 15th up to 6th there. That's outstanding. Disappointing for Lizzie Wellborn. Second down to 8th. But Courtney Hancock, 11th to 1st. Great swim leg from her. They're moving up and down and things are happening. They're getting caught on cans. They're falling off everything. We talk a lot about, you know, it's not what happens to you, it's how you deal with it. I think it was Captain Jack Sparrow that said, the problem is not the problem, it's the attitude towards the problem that's the problem. <laughs> and don't, don't, don't take your dogs to Australia as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, definitely. Uh, we see, well, you said that. doesn't matter what happens to you. It's how you deal with it. Look at how Jordan Mercer dealt with it. She was almost backdoor gone 
after that mistake in that uh, first leg, the board leg, and now she's in front on board here with George Miller. Great shot for the lead here. And, uh, well, here it is, Courtney Hancock, stroke for stroke, right alongside her, Jordan Mercer. And with Plumers out, you're looking at two of the girls that are going to battle it out for this series title this year. And fantastic to see them up front. What a race this has become. The door opened with Liz Plumers, but these girls were sitting there. Don't, don't think that all of a sudden she would have won this series if she was here. Make no mistake, these girls are going so fast now. She set the bar, and they've been chasing her. They've stepped right through. Unbelievable performances from Geordie Mercer. She just keeps coming back. Yeah, well, I'll tell you who keeps coming back is Kirsty Higgison, and she's just hit the front again. Just a phenomenal talent. We saw she's only done one race previous to this year on board with DMAC here with a little bit of work to do to catch up. But yeah, Higgison won the first round and in only a second ever race and again has gone to the lead. And I don't think she has a, she has no fear. She doesn't care who she races and she's not prepared uh, to leave anything out there. She will give it to herself to try and take this win. And as you can see, just a phenomenal kayaking talent as a junior. And that's obviously equated to a great ski talent. But what's doing at Noosa Heads? There's something in the water up there. Look Mercer, one round two. Higgison, one round one. And here they are, first and second in this uh, second race of round three. Oh, and there's Courtney Hancock, currently third. A brilliant swim from her. Courtney, of course, a winner a couple of years ago. An absolute star of this sport. And you've got to give uh, Jordan's dad a wrap, don't you? Because Darren does all the coaching up there at Noosa. And from every report you get, he's just brilliant. He's doing a wonderful job, and you, you, I guess you see these two girls take the lead in the ski, the ski leg here, Kirsty Higgins and Geordie Mercer. They've probably been chasing Jack Moyes while he's trying to perfect that flat water ski paddling because it's certainly showing they're paddling better than anybody else out there. Yeah, Higgison, uh, we know ski her strongest leg. Mercer obviously borders her strength, but a phenomenal craft athlete nonetheless. And here come some runners oh. now as well. So look oh. at this, the two Noosa club mates come together and then separate again. You can just see that experience of Higgison on the ski. She chases it, she cuts back. Uh, she's yeah, truly world class. Here they go again. Looks like Coleman's uh, teed one up from outside as well. So a chance for these back markers to close the gap uh, up on these leaders. And can you see how much movement for the people at home? See how much movement is going on. We get on board with Rebecca Creedy. The ski wobbles around. There's a rudder at the back. Your feet are driving that rudder. You're turning left to right. You're trying to follow these bumps, which, by the way, with this chop, aren't heading straight to the beach. They're heading across the beach. So you follow it, then you turn. You follow it, you turn. There's so much going on here that we don't realise. Yeah, it's a bit more than just jumping on the paddle boat at your local river. So true, so true. And the paddle boat, oh, right over there on the right is Courtney Hancock, who's chased it way down the beach on her little paddle boat. Yeah, but well, Geordie Mercer, the paddle boat queen at the moment, doing a great say, job. We're going to zoom out here, and here we go. Uh, right to left, Courtney Hancock there on this orange ski. Mercer in the middle. And then her Noosa club mate, Kirsty Higgison, probably closer to the flag here. Now, here we go. The point's so critical here. You'll see these girls get off. Oh, a mistake from Hancock. So that's going to cost her. She can't win this second race. So it's going to come down to the Noosa Club Championships, really. Higgison, Higgison, Mercer, Mercer. Higgison, here comes Jordy on the outside. Can you get her? No! Oh, Kirsty Higgison, the last stretch, and just gets her. So it looks like it will be Hancock for third. And now the battle on now for points so critical. Miller's come from nowhere. Great job by her. Tara Coleman in there. Hurry up, Brown. Carly Nervin. And now some of these back markers some work to do. Crystal Smith that led early on now. A fair way back. Ella Brown's going to be in the mix there. Brody Moyer as well. All right, let's get to Sam on the beach. Percy Higgison, congratulations. That's a great race too. Tell me, what were you thinking when you were coming down that wave on the last ski leg? Um, thank goodness I got away. Um, I... I had a bit unfortunate first race, so I didn't manage to catch a wave at all. So to get away from the second race, I was like, oh, thank goodness I get to breathe. So as I looked over, I realised against Geordie and Courtney for sprint up the beach and they're so bloody quick. So thankfully I had like the inside lane, just put my head down and ran as fast as I could. So yeah, to come over the win against them is pretty good. Oh, it's going to help. Pretty good. That's an understatement. Kirsty Higgison, brilliant. And as Kurt said, the Noosa Club Championships, Jordan Mercer there and Courtney Hancock after that wonderful swim, moving it down. Brody Moy is going to have a lot of work to do, as will those on the next page, because it's going to be all about the handicap. Crystal Smith, Tian Raymond, Eliza Smith. And what a race for Courtney. A good swim and a mistake. Yeah, now the conditions, it's really strong, that wind out wide around those cans, and then it sort of dies off. Uh, how are you going to play that in the final? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I just had a, a terrible board start there, and there was actually one of the girls got caught in the can because of that wind, so you've just really got to make sure you're aggressive out there, and um, yeah, just making sure you're focusing on yourself, uh, no one else, and as I said, I think before, just 
He sure is. Just, I think it's where it's going to be won or lost just in here. If you, if you make a mistake, I think, you know, you can lose five or six placings. Awesome. Good stuff. Thanks, Gord. Well, there she is, Courtney Hancock. A little mistake at the end, but she's still there or thereabouts. We've got the men coming up from Newcastle, the new to grain Iron Man series. It is great to have your company this afternoon on Nine's Wide World of Sports, Newcastle. Oh, I love the town of Newcastle, that sweet Novocastrian grin. Beautiful beaches and some fantastic competition today. We have round three, the second race for men. Yeah, race number two coming up here. Board, swim, ski, the order, and away they go. Much the same as the women. It looked like someone missed their board there for a moment. But again, just getting away there. And it looks like uh, at the back there, just those mistakes that can just prove so costly uh, in the run out here. But Matt Poole off to a fly and alongside him, Ali Day. That's uh, Kendrick Liu and his new JM paddleboard. That's a little bit different for us, that, that one. But uh, Kendrick is now on the right side of closest to us. I'm actually on board with him. And uh, he's moving up that side. That's just the, the spot I said earlier. The water does flow out there. If you get any water at all moving, it'll be on that left side, that north side. Yeah, one thing saved Louis at that start there was the fact that he was on the outside. So he didn't have to go through the pack. He could, could come around them. And there's no better place to be than on the sidewash. And of the sidewash of this man, shout out next time. Trev, you can just explain a little bit with board paddling as our uh, vision here, some great shots on, uh, yeah. on, uh, on our leader. Don't they call it torture when you get your water splashed in your face over and over and over again? Look at that. That's what you've got to deal with when you're board paddling. Splash, splash, splash. How to deal with it. How to get the board in the right position. And it's uh, it's one of those really, really fun things to do if you get right into it because you can surf on it as well. But jeepers, it's hard on the back and hard on the knees and hard on everything else. I just wonder whether some of these other athletes uh, have nightmares at night and all they can see is orange and green, orange and green. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Eckstein's board, where is it? But it's easy for us to laugh about it up here as well. But, but really, literally, I think you see it in interviews. Everybody's thinking about Shannon. And when you're at the top, that's your job. As we see Shannon come in in first place around that can and everybody oh, else caught like and Cuffy fighting. again got caught on the inside there so much uh, like a carbon copy of what happened to Georgia Miller in that girls uh, second race has happened there again to a lesser extent but on board with Bevy now uh, got caught up in that mess and in 12th spot with some work to do. I like what Bevy said earlier he talked about how he made a couple of mistakes and he wanted to race them you know the mistake free race now and he really wants to go after that win. I like the attitude. I like the way he's looking at it. It looks like he's actually doing that in the water. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to do it. It's really good to see someone try and do, race their own race. Not chase Shannon. Go out and do it my own way. Well, uh, speaking about chasing right now, they're all chasing Shannon at the moment and just trying to see. This is what I love about board paddling. When they turn that last can, everyone's got their own little theory about where's the best way to come in. They are chasing these runners all over the ocean. Kendrick Louis right there. Jack Moyes is doing his best there as well. And you can see these guys really trying to rev up and see if they can hook up a, a runner. Matt Bevilacqua there as well. Look at him. He's pushing much like Brown. We saw Brown come through the field on a runner. Now Bevilacqua trying to do the same. What about Ali Day? What, what do you make there? He, he came first last year. He's there or thereabouts. He's not too far behind. Hey, but has everyone else lifted? Don't worry about Ali Day. He did the four-hour cool and get a gold a few weeks before the start of the first round, a 12-minute sprint race. He'll come as the season goes on. But back to these waves. Oh, here they come down now. So Exxon looks like he's going to have a little bit of company here on this uh, leader's wave. And it uh, is going to be... Is it uh, Luke Cuffin is coming up? So Cuffy recovers from that boy turn. And look, the cavalry are coming as well on this second wave. Three, six of them here on the chase as they go into the swim leg. Bevel Aqua back door with some work to do with Nathan Smith. And that's how fast this pace is as well. Matty Bev was actually pushing up right behind Shannon, and now he comes off on the third wave. So much movement going on. The field quality is so high. Great work from Luke Cuff. Yeah, really good recovery by him. He's a phenomenal board paddler. These boys with some work to do. Dane Crowell there. Tannen Linden had a good opening uh, board leg as well as uh, these two go in. And uh, really, I guess when you talk about Luke Carf, he's been he's been around a long time now. He was almost the uh, heir, heir apparent uh, to really try and take that wave, that next generation. Obviously, uh, born and bred on the Gold Coast, went up to the sunny coast for a bit. He's back now at the Mermaid Beach Club and uh, trying to build something there with a good young little squad. And now uh, Shannon Eckstein back in front. And I've been really impressed with Cuffy so far this summer. He really seems like he, he's taken up another level. Well, you mentioned two names there, Luke Cuff and Tannen Linden. Tannen Linden was doing two years ago what Luke Cuff is doing now, pushing right into that top six consistently. Now he's struggling a little bit, so it's good to see him back at the front of the pack. But as you say, Luke Cuff is just there the whole time. 
His transitions are incredible. He's almost, if, if outside of maybe Shannon Eckstein, potentially the best board paddler in the field, Luke Cuff. We're going to see a lot from him in the next couple of years. Here we are. We're on the swim. This is the Nutrigrain Series in Newcastle. And, of course, all these places are just so important because they all involve where you're going to be ranked for this third race. Yeah, that's it. This second race now is uh, plenty of spectators here. It's a beautiful natural uh, amphitheatre here at Newcastle as well. Allows the mob to come in and just uh, the boys getting around these cans here. There's no help for them at all whatsoever uh, coming back in here. Just these little swirls and you can see they're starting to bunch up a little bit as they make their way back to shore. Just the uh, spinal ski leg to go through to finish this off here. And look at this technique, Eckstein underwater. He just looks so beautiful, nice and long. And there we see Ali Day. Tim asked the question just before, what about Ali Day? We see Shannon Eckstein and shadowing him, Ali Day moves in right behind him. Both of those guys, exceptional swimmers. But as you say, the technique on a day like this, it's all about conserving the energy. It's all about coming back into that small but important wave area with some energy still there but to burn, ready to actually sprint and to get onto the wave. Yeah, you can just see the two styles. Luke Cuff on the left, Shannon Eckstein on the right, Ali Day just behind them. So you can just see those hands coming out of the water a little bit higher there from Cuff. It just shows he's a little bit more fatigued. He's pushing a little bit harder. Now he said, well, not many waves, much like the ladies. There's going to be a tiny one here. We're going to get three, six, oh. nine, all day. Come down. Look at this. Heads up. Who's going to emerge? Jane Farrell's going from nowhere. Jack Boyce is up there as well. Is that Max Beatty? No, Ali Day there as well. So Eckstein, Day, and uh, Cuff there, the top three, and the boys. On the chase, not far behind. Wow, you do all that work. Even on a small day like this, these waves come and they play a part. Look at this, Matt Bull coming around looking strong, and there's the chase pack. Yeah, Ali Day, we did mention him there. Seventh up to second, so an outstanding swim for him. Eleventh up to fourth for Dane Farrell, so brilliant. Just those little waves, those little waves on a day like today, it's only five or ten metres, but that can make all the difference. Gives you that little bit of rest. But then again, <laughs> it kicks again. Eckstein straight back on his ski, he didn't let that little jag worry him and uh, straight away off again and Eckstein uh, where he loves it, out in front and once again Luke Cuff on the chase. So let's talk about Ali for a moment and we're right on board with him. This is where you start to see Ali move through and I think as the season goes on we'll see more and more of it. His sprinting will come in, he's so strong, he's so fit, he did win the series last year. We watched him struggle a little bit, not so much struggle, but not right up there in that first and second place. Tannen Linden has disappeared, as we said before, but Kendrick Louie, who is so powerfully in the top six, we haven't seen a lot of him. Matt Poole, finally seeing him up the front again. All of a sudden, there's a bit of movement and shaking and everything for these young guys turning up, but we'll start to see the cream rise to the top in these later rounds. Yeah, some great split-screen action, as you can see here. Shannon Eckstein, Ali Day in two, Luke Cuff in three, G. Dane Farrell just going around the cans there in four, and then Matt Bevelacqua, Jack Moyes uh, doing a great job, and Matt Poole trying to peg them back. We're on the ski with the men. Let's get down to Reese. Reese. All right, here I am with Ian Poole, Matty Poole's dad, and Handler. He's looked like he's hit a bit of form again today, mate. Yes, thanks, Reese. Yeah, he's bounced back. The first two rounds, terrible for him. He had a virus. He was really sick, and it's tough to race when you're okay, such fit guys when you're when you're down on, on your level of fitness and you're really crook. So great to see him there. He bouncing back. Not 100%, but he's having a hell of a crack. And being a dad, being a handler, hard work. It's stressful. I reckon I'd rather race myself. It's just so hard. You're sitting there watching it. You can see it unfold, and, yeah, it's pretty tough. He's got a shirt on as well, Ian Poole, always known. He's still got the six-pack happening, and, uh, yeah, his son uh, competing a lot better here. Bad virus for that first weekend. Yeah, but such a, you know, talking about the shirt off, you know, Matty Poole is such a specimen. He's such an athlete. He's such a, a warrior, a gladiator, a big guy. He's always going to bounce back. We know he's going to come back through the second half of this series. So I'm here with Jackson Maynard in 12th spot. Uh, we speak about this format. If you're outside the top 10, you're going to be in some big trouble when it comes down to that third and final race. You need to be in the top 10 in these first two races. And again, look at them spread out. Ali Day chasing these runners, taking the direct route back. It looks like Shannon Eckstein coming back a little bit further north, hooked up a nice little wave. Shannon, good job. Ali there puffing and panting, but still putting in. I think there's a little mini story showing itself here. Last year, Ali Day did overcome Shannon to win the series. Shannon's bounced out the first couple of rounds, and all of a sudden, now he's leading and way out in front, and now Ali's responding. So it's, this could be a real ding-dong battle between these two. Yeah, Eckstein and Ali Day. We're in Newcastle as they hit the beach, and it's Shannon up first. Yeah, perfect points, Eckstein. Two from two. Exactly what the doctor ordered. He'll be off go. Ali Day won't be too far behind him in this third and final race. But you can't ask for much more there. Uh, the GOAT, the greatest of all time. He's uh, done it one round one and two, and he's won the first two races today. Ali Day there. In, uh, in second spot. These boys now, the points 
so critical to see where they'll go off a handicap in that third and final race. Nathan oh. Smith up and running, having a good one. Here they go now, Wes Berg, Jacko Maynard, Tannen Linden. We know how quick Linden and Maynard are across the sand. It's going to be close right there. Oh, I'll have to be, leave it with the judges. Let's get down to the beach. Two from two. You didn't even seem as though you were puffed finishing that race. How's the body feel? Oh, uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, the swim leg, I took it pretty easy then. Um, so I recovered a bit. Uh, and then Ali came up on the ski. We've got some good runners coming in, so I'm guessing I'm a first, but I'm not sure who's off second. Even though you've won two races, you know, it only gives you two second lead, so it's it's probably not fair in that regards, but you gotta you got to come out and, and go again. How much of an advantage uh, is the breakdown of, of times that we've got for this format? Uh, it's not too much of an advantage, but it gives you a chance to get off and get in clear water. So if I get through this break, all right, and get some clear water, that's that's good. But if you caught one wave in front, then your advantage is gone. All righty, there is Shannon Eckstein and the results. He's done it again. Interesting, yeah, he does only get the two seconds. Ali Day there just behind him. Dane Farrell in a good spot. Matty Poole in sixth. We heard from his dad, Kendrick Louis, eighth there. Tannen Linden down there in 11th as we flip the page. And Matt Bevelacqua on seventh. I didn't mention him. Benny Carberry, Brooks, Beatty, White, Taylor, and Kane Eckstein. Well, he is struggling right at the moment, is Kane. That is race two for the men. We've got the women, and we'll find out who wins this round after this Channel 9 and Nutrigrain series. <laughs> Great to have your company in Newcastle. Uh, we're getting down to the business end, of course. The women's race three, it's all on handicap. Two seconds, two seconds. So Courtney will go off first, then Georgia Miller. As you can see down the right-hand side of the page, Jordan Mercer, six seconds. Kirsty Higgison, ten. And it starts to get tough at this point. Yeah, really tough now. You go outside the top ten, these girls are really going to have to work. Coleman, Brown, Creedy, right on the cusp there. And then even more so... Crystal Smith, Mackenzie, and then all the way down to Eliza Smith. Of course, Liz Plumer's out today through injury and Amy Nerven through illness. So here we go. Uh, this third and final race has come down to this. And uh, Courtney Hancock, well, she's going to be the hare and they're all going to have to chase her. There she goes, Courtney. Well, Courtney Hancock has just left off and the countdown is now on. The girls are lined up. They're just stretching it out a little bit, making sure that they don't stand flat-footed. There's not too much assistance out there with waves at all, so there's a lot of hard work for these girls that are at the back of the line. The last three just go now and uh, we're in for an exciting race again, guys. Yeah, so the girls, they go through and gee, didn't Georgia Miller just execute that beautifully? Only a few seconds behind Courtney Hancock. She got on her ski a little bit better, and that's why they're quite even right now. So one of the most experienced in Hancock up against the rookie in Miller, and, uh, well, the way they did it in those first two rounds as well. And with Georgia Miller being on the left side of our screen, that means she's on the inside of the turns. On the ski, that can be a wonderful advantage as we sit on the ski here with Maddie Dunn looking across at Kirsty Higgison, who's also going to get the inside on her. Yeah, so some great shots here. You can just see the speed, the pace of this first leg. And those two girls have cleared out already. And then that second pack is starting to clump together and try and work together to try and peg back these two leaders. But is it Courtney Hancock unloading early on here? She's giving it everything she can to try and break away from this pack. And Georgia Miller coming along for the ride. Well, there's two other elements that are really kind of amplified right now. And that is their thinking. They're thinking, how many seconds did I start behind? How am I going to do in the series? All that sort of stuff. Hopefully for the girls, they're overcoming that. But the second part is fatigue. Fatigue now sets in. It's in the, you're in the race, you're living the dream, you're doing what you really love, but fatigue now starts to play a role. So much for the uh, people at the back to, to pick up, but when you've only got two seconds, four seconds, six seconds, there's, there's almost like a stamp of advantage for the first six, and that's about it. Yeah, definitely, isn't it? It's just that first group, maybe six to ten. Uh, if you have a really good start and everything goes your way, um, you can work together as a group, but obviously the first two placings here, Miller and Hancock, are using it to their advantage at the moment. Uh, on uh, split screen there, we can just see the two girls going around. Then the chase back here, they come. Harriet Brown just went through there. Rebecca Creedy's there as well. Looks like Carly Nerven there. Lizzie Wellborn, Tarek Coleman at that turn. So if you can stay out of trouble like we've seen all day, that wind is coming across left to right, making it hard for these uh, can turns. So you can stay out of trouble, stay out of the pack. It's going to go a long way to you winning the day. And as we see the girls chasing back in the runs, they disappear down in the trough. We're talking about seconds, you know, two seconds per per place that they get an advantage of. But when you're up near the front, you also get a confidence from it. 
all right, I'm not gonna, you know, number one, number two, number three. That really gives you a confidence advantage. How many seconds is that worth? I don't know. Well, you spend plenty of time out in front. It doesn't hurt as bad, does it, when you're winning? It doesn't. You literally, you know, there's a great Lee Matthews in AFL saying where there's hope, there's energy. When you're up around the front, you find something inside of yourself that seemingly isn't there. If you crack away from behind, you're really fatigued, you crack away, well, all of a sudden you've got all this new energy. Where there's hope, there's energy. That's what the girls want to cultivate for themselves. They don't want their, their place or the waves to provide it. They want to find it in themselves. Yeah, this is huge. Huge ski leg here from Georgia Miller. If you were saying what her weakness is, it's got to be her ski leg. It's been a weakness for a couple of years now. They've worked so hard on it. And now Hancock comes down this wave as well. So these girls in the box position right now. Ski swim board the order for this final. So going into the swim leg, who were two of the best swimmers in the field? Miller and Hancock. And they've spread out. Now Courtney's come over the rock section right down that that southern end of the field. Oh. She's right over the rock. She's going to have to come all the way back. She's chased the runs down to that end. She's taken a calculated gamble and she's pulled it off. We can see her jumping off the ski right over there on the right and she'll come back. That's a long run back though. Well, I'll be intrigued to see how far they uh, level out when she comes back to the shoot. Well, Courtney chose to go where the waves were breaking but she had quite a big run back up the beach and I tell you what, that meant that Georgia Miller could catch up on her. Jordan Bursa is right behind. This will be a thrilling second interchange. Yeah, as they pour up the beach and there is Courtney. Had a bit of extra running to do but uh, did it beautifully. And Georgia Millard, see the look on her face then as she ran through. We know Geordie, we're expecting Geordie to fly in the transitions, but Georgia Millard just looks so switched on then. Well, there we go, and we go through now. Harriet Brown in there, Tara Coleman coming up as well. Carly Nerv and Maddie Dunn. The two best swimmers in the field right now are one and two. And uh, you go behind them, Mercer and Moyer are probably swimmers their weakest leg. So this swim, it's long, it's flat, and this is where it's going to be one and done. We heard Jack Moyes talking about fixing the weakness up at Noosa with Darren Mercer. That's what Geordie, Geordie Mercer's been doing as well. All righty, let's take a break. This is Nine's Wide World of Sports. We're going to get a winner real soon. Great to have your company, and of course it is Georgia Miller and Courtney Hancock out in front right at the moment in the women's race, round three. Yeah, no surprises here. Both these girls have extended this lead, and the only thing that's going to stop them now from uh, taking out the day is going to be away from behind, you'd think. Because uh, when they're up and running and the girls are still swimming, that gap's going to go even further. Just a little bump there, but just not enough. So both these girls neck and neck, Trev, into this final leg. Oh, that little bit of assistance. But now look at them trying to get the legs out of the water. Courtney Hancock working so hard. That really pushes the, hand, the, the heart rate up through. Georgia Miller takes the lead. And what a wonderful swim by those two. We expect it of them, but you've still got to put the hard work in. We love it at Newcastle. It's absolutely beautiful. But make no mistake, it's hard work for these girls. Yeah, so here we go. Miller one, Hancock two. Here comes the chase back. They got a little bit of a wave, so that gap might be a little bit closer than what it should be. Ella Brown with a huge swim now in third spot. Jordan Mercer in four, Harriet Brown there in five, Maddie Dunn in six. We know what a fantastic four paddler she is, so Miller straight on. And we've seen well. Oh. Just a little pop over there, nicely executed. And we'll have a look how close these girls will try and work together to try and peg back Miller here in this final board leg. Georgia Miller just doing incredible. Look at this, what an incredible start to this final board what leg. What happened to Hancock in that transition? She got caught inside and now the pack's caught her. So Miller with a bit of a gap and gee, if she's close enough, she's going to be good enough. Oh goodness, this is, this is a real turn up. This could be our third rookie, our third first up win in three races. Yeah, some incredible stuff. Well, we saw Jordan Mercer now in third spot, so she's worked her way through the field. Of course, winner of round two. We saw the rookie, Kirsty Higgison, win round one. Can we see another rookie win here? Who knows, but flying on the outside here, it looks like Ella Brown has come on the outside. So Brown has come from the clouds, and we know what a phenomenal board paddler she is. We'll have to keep an eye on that. You can see Brown and Hancock out to that left-hand side on board here with Tara Coleman. And right next to her looks like Carly Nerven. So these girls trying to peg them back, but at the moment, Oh. As we see, it is Georgia Middle left-hand side. Ella Brown is flying out of the right-hand side of the screen. What an effort by her. Could this be a huge upset? Brown, another rookie here in the series. Well, Ella Brown at Bruchidor Club, training under Reese Drury, part of our commentary team, and doing an incredible job, getting better and better. Another one of these young girls that's really stepping through that open door. Yeah, and one of our Indigenous uh, lifesavers as well. We go back to Samantha O'Brien, probably our first Indigenous Iron Woman, Australian champion 92, and uh, obviously Ella Brown flying the flag there for our first Australians as well as Georgia Miller turns the can in front. Ella Brown, this is huge. Two rookies, one, two. 
could cause the upset of the series so far if they can hang on again. Caught on this can. Oh. Matty oh, Duck. What's oh. going on there? Oh, music to the ears of those two leaders as they extend it even further. Look at this. Ella Brown is flying on that pink and white cracker. Now, we notice Ella Brown coming across with the runs, with the chop from the first can across to the second. That's why they're getting caught on the first can. They're not coming wide enough to handle that chop pushing on. At this stage, you would expect them to have fixed that, but oh, you get fatigued runner, and you make mistakes. There. That's a perfect little runner for Miller as she comes down that one. So she extends her leads as some great little runners down to come as that wind picks up. But what about this board lead? The two rookies have turned it on here in this third round, and Brown chases back again. So what a ding-dong battle. These two girls, they look like experienced campaigners. This is only their third ever race in the uh, Nutrigrain series. And look for those dark spots in, in as we look out at the water. You see the dark spots. That's the shadows in the troughs of the waves. That's where they want to get the nose down. So we see Georgie Miller will go for it. Geordie Mercer now on board. She's going to want to get that nose down in those little troughs and follow that trough wherever it goes. If you can get enough speed, it can turn into a wave. Yeah, runners going to make all the difference now. Runners and waves, whatever you can pick up. Because at the moment, Georgia Miller in the box seat and a chance to win her first ever Kellogg's oh. Train Ironwood race. But here we go. Brown wants her first ever as well. Pushing oh. down this oh. side. She's gone past her. So Brown overtakes Miller. The rookies. It's a ding-dong battle to the finish here in round three. Oh, another run for Georgia Miller. She's on our left of the screen. Ella Brown on the right. She's got the momentum. She's so forward. We talked about her earlier being a fantastic board paddler. Such good technique. Look at this, she's got the momentum through. Could this be a turn up for Ella Brown? Oh, the adrenaline is pumping. The girl from Maruchidor is absolutely storming home. And now Miller trying to fight back. And a wave coming, wave coming. So this is going to be it. A rookie's going to win the day. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Georgia Miller? Is it going to be Ella oh, Brown? It's going to come to a sprint finish. They're on the wave together. Oh, oh ho, ho, ho. it's a head bobber. And it's Miller now staying on the board. She gets off. Brown on the outside, it's Miller. Oh, Miller powering up the beach, bursting into the sand, and Georgia Miller take a bow, a win, and her third win. Oh, what a win. Oh, report to the arrivals lounge, because the rookies have landed here at the Kellogg Duty Grand Iron, Iron Woman Series. Uh, Matty Dunn in third, looks like Harriet Brown fourth, but Georgia Miller wins as a rookie. Matty Dunn, another rookie runner-up. The girls keep coming here, but the surprise packet, well, what a performance as they keep coming. Lizzie Wellborn, Kirsty Higgison, we'll see where that has her in the overall standings. Courtney Hancock, no luck in that final board leg. Carly Nerthen in there as well. What a performance from Georgia Miller. Just extraordinary. What a day for the Miller family. Georgia Miller. Hey, they're cheering for you, Georgia Miller. <laughs> Congratulations, your first year in the series and you've got your first win in the series. How did it feel as you were running through oh, that river? It's so amazing. I mean, I've got so much family here and to have them support me is just amazing. I can't, I can't thank them enough. And, <laughs> and I love all the girls in the series. They're all so supportive. So it's just, oh my God, it's huge. And I really can't believe it. <laughs> Coming down on that wave, you could see Ella in the exact same position. You knew you had some something else in you to get up the beach. Yeah, my coach has always told me to come to the inside and that's what I did and I just got the better run up the beach and I'm so happy for Ella. She's such a great racer and oh my gosh, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Oh, genuine excitement. What a wonderful win. Young Georgia Miller, that's a name. Get used to it. She's going to be around for a while. Winning ahead of Ella Brown, Maddie Dunn, and of course Tara Coleman there in 11th, Rebecca Creedy, Courtney Hancock off to such a great start is in 8th. And uh, we turn the page, of course, no Liz Plumers or Amy Nervin. It is Tian Raymond and Eliza Smith. All right, well, second place, you must take a lot of confidence away from this. And, and know what, what we're doing up at Maruchador with Bugsy and, and, and all the rest of the crew, we're, we're doing some good things up there. Yeah, um, really enjoyed yourself and Bugsy coaching me and, yeah, looking forward to the future. All right, well, Ella, I'm so proud of you. Uh, let's look forward to round four, so uh, congratulations on today. Good to see Reese. He's learning early. You've got to, give, got to give yourself a wrap because no one else will. There it is, the overall standings. Oh, and look at that. Jordan Mercer still holding it out on top. Harriet Brown, Brody Moyer, Maddie Dunn. Look at uh, Georgia Miller moved up in there. And Kirsty Higginson still sitting strong. Carly Nerthen, 
Alla Brown, Courtney Hancock not used to seeing her, Liz Plume is dropping back, not competing. Down Beck Creedy not having a great season, Tian Raymond and of course Eliza Smith sitting at the back of the pack. In position seven is 19. Yeah. All right, the men, well the men are ready. This is race three. Can Shannon Eckstein do it or will one of these other guys, Ali Day two seconds, Bevel Aqua four seconds, Pool six, Farrell eight, Moyes ten, and it becomes tough after that. Oh, what about that top eight? It's just ridiculous. And these guys on the cusp, Calf, Berg, Maynard, they are gonna have to bust it. Linden as well. And these guys, doubly so, are they are gonna have to pull out a miracle in these conditions to try and peg back those leaders because that pace is gonna be on from the get-go. And what about that top three? Eckstein, Day and Bevelacqua, they just keep doing it at the moment. Well, here's Shannon, he is off now. Two seconds later, boom, Ali Day will go. Well, I mean, aren't known for their mathematics, and I won't lie, there was a bit of confusion at the back of the line here is where everyone is positioned. But one thing is for sure, it doesn't take that long to get through this pursuit format. You think it's a long time? It really isn't, as we're seeing right here. We're through half of them already, and these guys at the back, well, they're capable of an upset. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Bit tough on the Ironman there. Trev sees himself as a bit of an abacus, very good at maths at school. Okay, and of course, Shannon, next time we call in the professor. You know, it's all about his mathematics. Oh, these guys know exactly what they're doing. One of the hardest things in surf sports is that drag-in ski start. They don't normally do it at, uh, at carnivals either, do they, Trev? So you've normally got a handler in an Ironman having that ski oh, sitting there before you can see Max Smith just charging. And these guys have got no other option. Hayden White as well, just to get on and, uh, yeah, just get in there and start ripping through the water. Otherwise, uh, this uh, first ski leg's going to be over before you know it. Well, we call that the Le Mans start, where you leave your craft down the line, you run down, you pick it up, and away you go. Normally, everyone's lined up and they run down and pick it up together. So there is an advantage from being able to get in clean, grab your ski, get it over the first wave and go. But someone else could get that advantage behind because you can run straight into a wave, and that would repeatedly happen in a format like this. It makes it so exciting. Wow, some carnage there at the board can. It looks like Tannen Linden might have been uh, clipped himself oh. on Jacko Maynard and he brought Luke Cuff undone. So we'll have a look at this replay here. You can look Linden to that right-hand side and then Cuff's come off. So a bit of chaos there and unfortunately this format at this level, these boys oh. are gone. Oh, this... that you just don't want that. Look at Tan and Linden as he paddles off. He'll look over his shoulder. Look at that. Like, what, what did you do? <laughs> There's nothing you can do and now that's... That's done and dusted, just mistakes just get punished. Absolutely no comeback for that one. We talk a lot about Nutrigrain Ironman and women being unstoppable. It's all about the unstoppable element. How do you deal with it? You know, if you can't get it this round, you have to get it next round. Right now, Tan and Linden's gonna have to try and get a couple of places back and try and finish this race strong, but that's gonna hurt. Yeah, it looks like we're seeing uh, the back of Wes Berg here. These boys have worked at EG uh, uh, oh. on board with Jack Moyes, looking at Dane Farrell on a beautiful little runner. So look at Farrell on this lovely run around the catch. He's had a good day out here, Farrell, as well. He's bu building beautifully into this, but I'll tell you, he's building beautifully. You know the deal out in front. It's that orange and uh, um, long ski again. And uh, Shannon next time, and right on his tail, Ali Day. He wants to get back in here with a victory. And, and Matt Bevelacqua, well, these three guys have just headlined the series the first two rounds, and no difference here in round three so far. Yeah, they're beautiful pitches, aren't they, as we watch Shannon Eckstein do what he does so well. But just having a look at it, the conditions are tough. How much work has gone into these early couple of rounds, and how much does that pay now? Well, look at Shannon Eckstein. Tim, as you ask that question, he's looking around, he's looking at every little run. So that almost answers your question. For him, a lot of thought's gone into it. So he's saved a bit of energy. He's been super, super smart. That's why these three guys are at the front. They're getting smarter and smarter, and they're doing everything right. And now, that's three on one wave, three on the next. Yeah, just bizarre how it works out, those first three results, the uh, opening uh, two rounds. Eckstein, Bevelacqua and Day, and here we are. When it comes down to it, round number three, the final, it's the three again that are at the table. Eckstein, and then Ali Day and Matt Bevelacqua. And Matty Bevelacqua may be the youngest, but he's not letting them go. Well, it may be these guys' third race of the day, but they sure are not slowing down whatsoever. And look who they are, the podium from round one and two. Will they be able to hold on until the end? Let's see as we head into the second leg. Yeah, that's the question. Doing a great job down there, Sam, and uh, there's plenty that want to catch them. Yeah, looking at Wes Berg back there in about eighth or ninth spot. And everybody in this field wants to be up the front, but right now it's those three guys that just keep doing it. Stay right where you are. We are reaching a crescendo. This is Nine's Wide World of Sports, the Nutrigrain Ironman Series. We're going to know a winner in just a tick.
Welcome back. Channel 9's Wide World of Sports. And this is a thrilling race to finish off round three of the Neutral Grain Ironman series. A lot of big names right up the front. Wow, well, we're talking about how competitive this series is and how good these front three are. Matty Bevel, Akushan, and Ekstein, Ali Day. Ali's really taken it to Shannon swam up. And look, a little wave's going to come through. Is it going to be three, four, or five? It's going to be three again. Four. Oh, one just off the back, so it's the nasty little double up there, but here they come, and look at this transition. Bevelacqua is flying like he did in that previous race. x in two, day in three now. What was trying to do, he's trying to break the field. Farrell's had a great uh, swim as well there in fourth. Matt Poole back in fifth and straight on here now. Bevelacqua, this is his race right now. He's trying to break the boys. Yeah, third up to first now, Matty Bevelacqua. Well done him. Outstanding in the termination when he ran across the uh, the line was just extraordinary. Can he stay there? Also, a good performance from Max Beatty. Max has taken it from 17th up to 12th. Wow, look at that. that that's that's our champ transition there. Really shows right back from Matty Bevelacqua's interview before this race. Just talking about he didn't want to make those mistakes again. He wanted to go after the win. And look at Ali Day, now taking the lead, now taking the pace. Shannon Eckstein, super smart. He'll be sitting on his backwash and getting that little bit of a run on the way out. He'll be saving himself for the trip home. Yeah, a bit of cat and mouse there. Bevelak was showed his hand really early in that transition, and then he's calmed the pace down. Now Ali Day showing his hand and seeing what he can do, and then Eckstein just sitting back, and you just know he's just conserving, he's conserving, and he's going to be there when it counts. Uh, Wes Berg and, and Jacko Maynard with some work to do at the back there, but look at these two packs. That's the first group out in that snake, that single file. And uh, the Chasers doing their best to try and catch up the final leg here. Yeah, well, this is the leg to win round three of the, the Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman series. It sets you up for the whole season. Ali Day and Matt Bevelacqua don't want to finish second and third to Shannon Eckstein every time. They're making their move right now. They come into this first can on the board. And as we've spoken about a couple of times today, it's all about getting on that inside of the turn. Will Shannon come up again on the wash? Let's watch now. There he is. He's sprinting up. If you look at that top of the left of the screen, Shannon's just moved up onto Ali Day's inside. That's no accident there, ladies and gents. That's him setting himself up. He'll go again as he gets close to that white can, and he'll try and get a run around the can. Yeah, you can see Dane Farrell trying to make inroads here on Matt Bevelacqua's side wash as well, but you cannot give someone like Shannon Eckstein this inside run here. Look at Ali Day trying to cut him off, and this Whoa. is critical. Look at that. Oh, they come together. Eckstein got the inside run, and guess who's front now? Eckstein just in front. Ali Day right next to him, but so critical that inside water wasn't and have a look it's going to happen again now and uh, not to mention if you've ever ran around a track the person in the lane on the outside is looks like they're going slower because they've got to cover more distance when you turn the arc around the apex of that can it's hard to keep up when someone's on your inside but ali day has done a great job of it. he's not giving shannon Eckstein an inch and yet shannon's still got that little run this is down to the three this is incredible yeah so the three star performers we've said it all day long this has been your top three for round one and two and i'll tell you what it's going to be your top three here for round number three. Oh. Chasing runners, they're linking up everywhere right now. Ali Day, Shannon Eckstein. Shannon Even on Matt Bevelacqua still there. Now Shannon flying down this one. Could this be the one that takes him? He increased that lead. Then oh. Ali gets another one. So they're all hooking up runners. Dane Farrell Ali's trying to get laying one. down. Needs to get to his knees. Needs to get to his knees now. Now Betty Bevelacqua coming through. He's gone past Ali there on that side. Ali should get on the other side of it. Oh, oh Matt Bevelacqua. Oh, working, working. Bevelacqua still going, still oh. going, still. Could this be it? Still going. Bevelacqua's hit it up from nowhere. Shannon Could on the left. to the win. It's going to fade out. It's going to be interesting to see the next wave. That was a huge runner by the former the Tath Legion. And look at him come down this now. Could he get his first ever series win? We're going to have to get the wide out shot to see where Eckstein is. But he's worked this runner beautifully. Oh, and the look on his face mirrored the determination of the words he gave. Look at Matt Bevelacqua. He's got a smile. His teeth are showing. Is he going to nail the professor? <laughs> oh, he's running up. Oh, well, big he hugs there from the handler, Naomi Flood. And here we go. The boy, what a story. He becomes a man today. Matt Bevelacqua, all the way from Clifton Beach in Tasmania, up to the Sunshine Coast of Mooloolaba, now down at the Curra Club on the Gold Coast. We'll take out his first ever Kellogg Dutch Grain Ironman Series weights. Matt Bevelacqua, your champion here for round number three. Oh, Shannon sneaks through on that inside for second. Ali Day for third. They've done it again, the top three. And now the battle on for fourth spot. Dane Farrell, a great day out. Matt Poole desperately trying to get there. Farrell before four. Poole five. Wes Berg will have to be happy with that one in six. He is puffing. But my goodness, Matt Bevelacqua, 
Oh, what a moment it was. And Nathan Smith coming in there. Now the run up the beach. Luke Cuff and Kendrick Louie. Every point counts here in the overall standings. The big story. What about Matt Bevilacqua? He's with Sam right now. Matt, great win. Congratulations. Uh, how does it feel for your first ever Ironman win? I'm still pretty numb, to be honest. It hasn't quite sunk in. I was talking to Jake in the morning, just he was sort of saying, can you get Shannon? And I felt so good at calling, but he's just, he never makes a mistake. And I just thought something he's got to give, and it did. That run was awesome. I was just thinking, oh my God, this is going to take me to the beach. But uh, oh, it's an unreal feeling. Talk about not making a mistake uh, in that board leg. You were just able to find the wave and, and make the most of those runners. Yeah, I worked the transition and got on the board first and Ali just boom, 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 straight up and took the lead and I was keen to just chill and make sure I worked those runs on the way back, so it worked. All righty, Matt Bevelac, well, what a day for him. His brightest day as an Ironman. He's beaten Shannon Eckstein, he's beaten Ali Day. There's Dane Farrell, Matt Poole. Well done, Wes Berg. Nathan Smith, Jack Moyes. There's Jackson Maynard in 12th as we turn the page on... Uh, this, a remarkable day in Newcastle. Carberry, Taylor, Brooks, Eckstein, White and Linden. Let's get to Reese, and he has Shannon with him. Second place today, mate. Uh, I know you. You wouldn't be real happy, but, you know, close race. Yeah, there's not much you can do. Um, yeah, I felt good in the first two races. Third races, I went all right. Sort of set it up, but when you don't get waves when you need them, it's, uh, it brings you back to the field in that handicap format. So, uh, Bevy, I think, got one wide on the board there. I didn't really see him go past, but... Um, the, you can't really afford to chase someone you're in front down there. Um, but, uh, yeah, second place is good for the series, but, um, yeah, still a lot. Yeah, he uh, was beaten today and beaten by a better man, Matt Bevilacqua. He's on 63, so he's three behind Shannon Eckstein. Ali Day on 54. There's Jackson Maynard as we flip the page. And Nathan Smith, of course. Kane Eckstein, Shannon's brother there on 28. There's a whole bunch on 28. And then we move down to Max Brooks, Farrell White, Taylor and Carberry. There's the board for the men. What an incredible win we saw from Matt Bevelacqua storming home in that last board leg to take the win. A breakthrough win for him, Trevor. Oh, and how happy are we for Matty Bevelacqua? Fantastic. Ali Day was right there as well. The two of them chasing Shannon. This is not Shannon's series. They're <laughs> after him. And don't worry, he's going to bounce back too. We talk about trying to find a way to, to, to be able to beat Shannon. We certainly saw that from Matt Bevelacqua. He's, he's worked it out, hasn't he, Reese? Yeah, he did an extremely good job today of putting a lot of pressure on the other competitors. And that last board leg, he just went on the attack. Strong transitions into that board and just went on the attack. A little bit of help the surf there on that run-up, but that's from pressure and maintaining pressure. So, Bevy, great job. We couldn't wipe the smile off Matt Bevelacqua's face as he crossed the line. You couldn't wipe it off as well as he took top spot on the podium for the first time, enjoying every little minute of that. The podium is exactly the same as we've seen in rounds one and two, just in a different order. Well, it was a day of first here on Newcastle Beach. We saw that with Matt Bevelacqua, a breakthrough win for him. But what about the women's? Georgia Miller. Her debut year, such a great win for her, wasn't it, Trevor? Oh, absolutely amazing, and the smile on her face was incredible. <laughs> and she's been a talent we've been watching for a long, long time. So it's great to see her have that win. And then looking also at Maddie Dunn coming back into contention back there in third. And I know Ella Brown as well, absolutely amazing. Well, we'll talk about Ella in a moment because I know one person is very, very excited for her win. But uh, Georgia Miller on top of the podium, she was enjoying every single moment that she could there as she took top spots there. An incredible effort from the rookie. Ella Brown joining her in second place. It was neck and neck, wasn't it, Risa? Uh, do you have a voice left? Are you next to me just yelling, yelling, <laughs> yelling at her? Yeah, very proud moment. She's she's a quiet young girl that's done a lot, a lot of hard work. And, and to see that and for her to come away with a second place was, was inspirational to me and just a, a fantastic result for her. Well, what an incredible day of racing we've had here at Newcastle Beach. We're back here again next week for round four. Will we see even more new faces on top of the podium? That, of course, is on February 14th. Make sure you check local guides for times. On behalf of Trevor Reese and the team, I'm Sam Squires. Thanks for your company. We hope to see you next time.